Doesn't surprise me a bit that Mario... And an accident, an accident. The 11 car, that's Kevin Kogan, up on its side in the pit area. A serious accident in the pit area, but look at Kogan. The car cut in half. The car in half, but Kevin Kogan climbs out. This accident occurring up at the head of the pit area. The crews are there, no fire. And once again, a tribute to the safety of these cars. Kevin Kogan climbs out of his broken and split machine. That's the situation. Let's just watch. Coming off of the fourth turn. Kogan taps the outside wall. The inside wall and then the end of the pit wall. Now there is an attenuated barrier right there at the end of the pit wall. There is also an ABC Sports camera right at the end of that pit wall. The field now very, very slow behind the pace car. And here is that camera at the end of the pit wall. You see Kogan sliding. He comes down. Now watch. High, slightly out of the groove, and right there, he impacts the wall and starts toward the inside of the track. Spinning backwards, this may have saved his life, that he hit backwards when he hit really hard for the first time. Now, of course, he impacts the end of the pit wall. And now sliding across to the inside of the pit wall. The newly resurfaced pit lane there. When I grazed the wall, uh, the right rear suspension collapsed, the lower right rear wishbone collapsed. And so the car basically at that point just had rear wheel steer and it just turned left. And from then on, I was just hanging on, and it was just boom, bang, and the next thing I know, I'm stopped in a pit lane and was begging for him to hit me, you know, with a hammer, knock me out, or do something. I mean, it's definitely one of the most unpleasant things I've ever had, obviously. Number four and uh, broke loose, and he hit the protective barrier at the end of the pit wall. Now, Bob, I have hit that, and as you can see, it really looks dramatic but the one good thing when you see the car impact that that's a styrofoam barrier here we are with the camera right on the edge of that attenuator now that really absorbs a lot of the energy upon impact but you got to remember you're still doing over 200 miles an hour he scrubbed off a lot of speed you see he's got the brakes locked up right now he's going in backwards probably the best thing to do but look how violent that is whips the car around the driver's being subject to that whipping around inside the cockpit and then uh, he's at Methodist Hospital. That blue red car with the silver. And the yellow comes out again. Whoa. Two cars right at the pit entrance. Greg Ray is one of them. There are three cars. One of them is a target Chip Ganassi car. It looks like Hornish and Manning. Well, he was hustling the car. Look at the damage to that thing. You can see the disgust with Hornish. He threw his steering wheel out and he wants out of the car. Both the left and the right side of it, he probably obviously just ended up clipping the guys in front of him. We knew that Hornish was hustling pretty hard. You have to see the bottom of your screen, all three of them coming around there. And Hornish was in the back side of it by the looks of it. He ended up just getting collected with yeah. everything that was going on. Pretty much a, a victim. Now that's an attenuated barrier, a, a barrier that can collapse on you at the end of the pits. It's been tested before and it looks like it's done its work again, but it was more what Ray and Manning were doing than what Hornish was doing. Ooh. I've hit that, Paul, and i got to tell you, that's uh, it's not a great feeling. That thing just does not. And we have a crash with Thomas Schechter entering it road. Right at the attenuator as Schechter... He was running in the top five. Let's take a look and see what happened. Oh, man, coming out of four. Remember, he crashed in turn four the very first year that he was here. He was leading in the first two years that he raced here in Indianapolis. He had led a total of 148 laps. Looks like he had his first race won here until he had a crash in turn four. Just a little bit high there coming off, and the back end walked around from him. And then, luckily, he did not get pegged as he was sliding across the track and hitting the attenuator, which is on the entrance to Pitt Road. Let's listen. 
Whoa, right, the left front wheel down on the rumble strips, upsets the balance of the car, takes the back end, swings the back end around, and Rusty, you and I have both been in that situation before. When you're spinning like that, you just hope you don't get hit. Yeah, he had the front of the car real down low in the racetrack. Whether it upset him or not, Scott, I don't know, but he definitely lost it. And I tell you what, he... I thank God she got slowed down enough before we hit that inside wall because that... They could... overdrove the corner and, and the car uh, stepped out on him on the high side, spun around, and uh, then he, he made the contact on the inside wall. Then as the car started to spin, and then and, he made contact yeah. with the attenuator, spun him the other way. That was a pretty crazy dr ride there for him. That was because you're right. As we got a look at the replay, did not hit anything in the turn, but just lost it coming out of that apex. Wow, it's going to be interesting to see... as could be he's got a passion you talked about the passion for this race right oh trouble i've actually done the same thing there one time hit the outside wall came in and hit the attenuator that was back in 1994, and after I hit the wall the first time, I thought, okay, I'm clear, and I looked out the side of my helmet, and lo and behold, as you said, Eddie, there's the attenuator. You're just a passenger with nothing left to do when the car cannot be steered. But the car did stay flat in the ground for as much as it went backwards many times. Here we go, real-time speed. Look at those orange flaps that are lifting up in the back. Sato, circulating oh. much slower. Oh, oh big crash. Boy. Into the oh, attenuator. No. That's Ross yes. Hitting. That's Spencer Piggott. This is going to cause a red flag for sure because they're going to want to finish this under green. Right at the pit attenuator. Right on the oh, very that's a end. big crash. Oh, boy. Drama. Huge drama. Spencer's now raising the visor. What that signifies that he's alert and awake, and it's a sign to race control and the AMR safety team. Oh. In spectacular style, and replays already way already way loose, loses it, brushes the wall, not super hard, and then it just hooks itself, and that's the worst case scenario oh. right there. He's going over 100 miles an hour, and comes to effectively a, a, a full stop. <laughs> Listen here. Oh. And that is why we have this new safer screen because I really believe, Townsend, that that just saved his life. Those tires, back up, back up, back up to the bottom. if those You're tires tired. would have You're come tired. over the top of the car and hit him in the head, yeah. who knows what would have happened. So he gets to see the target and then he knows that he's in for a wallop of a hit.